1957, Samuel Glassstone and Philip J. Dolan produced the definitive text on the effects of nuclear explosions. But it wasn't just text inside this tome. There was something of a collector's item that nuclear enthusiasts have been hunting for decades. A physical nuclear bomb computer. Thanks to eBay, I finally have one. This is how it works. Now entering the facility. Now, I know not all of you are as interested in getting on watch lists as I am, but for those of you in the know, you know that this tome is something of a sacred text among nuclear enthusiasts. It was first published by Samuel Glassstone, a writer and chemist for the U.S. Department of Defense. It was updated three times, the last update being in 1977. It is currently 730 pages long and contains everything from nuclear blast wave velocities to the biological effects of ionizing radiation. But why do we need a tome like this? Well, unfortunately, we had to know. Everyone did. It only took milliseconds to kill 80,000 people in Hiroshima, Japan. But on August 6, 1945, the history of the world was forever split into two eras, the time before nuclear weapons and the time after. For the next 80 years, all the way until today, every country on Earth knew that it would be forced to know what a nuclear war would entail. Death and destruction at unprecedented scope, scale, and speed. And so, in 1957, numerous federal agencies in the United States joined together to release the effects of nuclear weapons in order to prepare emergency responders and public officials for a nuclear attack. It's arguable that most preparation for the most powerful weapons ever developed is more theatrical production than protection, but this book had all the information nonetheless. After 1977, this book went out of print. If you want to check it out yourself, the entire book has been digitized and is freely available online. What's not available online, what I've been trying to get my hands on for years, is something that came along with the original printing of this book. And now, thanks to some eBay scouring, I finally have it. You finally got one of Trey Anastasio's guitars from Paul Languedoc? No, Aria, that... White Whale still eludes me. No, it's something in the back of this book. It's small and plastic. If you're watching and you have one of Trey Anastasio's Paul Languedoc guitars, I will pay you upfront in cash $15,000. Just saying. This is an original copy of the 1977 text. It's old, it's stained, it's heavy. But what I'm actually after is not all of this data all these wonderful photos and graphs. I'm actually after something in the very back in a little slot right here. It's called the Nuclear Bomb Effects Computer, developed by the Lovelace Foundation in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It is a beautiful piece of history, and it's deceptively complicated. I finally pulled the pin on trying to find this object after watching my friend Adam Savage recount how he is always trying to search for equipment of the linemen of the Bell Telephone Company. Mint copies of this book and this computer are now selling for hundreds of dollars. But half a century ago, the book was just three dollars and this computer just one dollar. It's not technically a computer though, is it? Aria, that's what it's called. Just go with it. According to the description, as a convenience to those interested in the effects of nuclear weapons, this circular computer was designed to make effects data easily available, some as functions of yield and range or of yield alone, and others not directly related to yield or range. Taken from the effects of nuclear weapons and subject to the limitations noted below, the information on the computer shows the many environmental variations associated with nuclear detonations that represent a potential hazard to man. Why I'm so interested in this object, why I'm showing it to you now, is that it's an incredible piece of science communication. This book is 730 pages long, and it's all technical information. All of that has been carefully considered and designed to fit in just this $1 piece of plastic. I don't think I've ever seen such a clean yet complex distillation of so much technical information like this before. Think of how much math and science and engineering this represents. There's an 80-page book on just how to use this 
one thing. So, how do you use it? First of all, this device is a circular slide rule, a hand-operated mechanical calculator. This is designed to evaluate 28 different effects of nuclear weapons. 13 parameters related to blast, 5 to thermal radiation, 1 to initial nuclear radiation, 2 to early fallout, 6 to crater dimensions, and 1 to fireball dimensions. It even can tell you how fast you will be thrown if you are hit by a nuclear blast wave. This works as a function of yield of a weapon all the way up to 20 megatons and range of the weapon, how far it is away, in miles. On the front here are all the blast effects, and on the back here are all the biological effects, thermal radiation and radiation dose. So I'm going to take the large disc here, and I'm gonna use that to indicate my range. You can see the range down here. I am then gonna use the inner circle to indicate the yield. So let's pick something that was used as an example in the book here. I'm gonna move the small window to 100 kilotons yield, and I'm gonna move the large circle until that lines up with 1.6 miles away. Now, if I look at the large window up here, I can see that the maximum overpressure at an optimum burst height will then be seven PSI. At a surface burst, it's gonna be around 3.5 PSI. Now, not changing anything here, I'm gonna see what happens to people on the ground. Let's see how fast a human body would be thrown by this range and yield data. So I look at the window glass velocity, I look up the man velocity here, and I go to the range, it says right here in miles, I go to 1.6, and it looks like you will be thrown 30 feet per second by a blast wave such as this. And the glass, the window glass at 1.6 miles away in this yield is somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 feet per second. Now, if I don't change anything, I turn this over and I can look at the biological effects by looking at these graphs and seeing where these hairlines intersect with those graphs. Looking at the initial nuclear radiation in REMS, for example, and following these hairlines, it looks like we're at somewhere between 10 and 50 REMS. Now, translating that to a unit that I know about, that's 0.1 sievert, which is about 10 times below what you would need to get immediate radiation sickness. Huh. Well, you look at that. Let's see if this computer can match what we know happened over Hiroshima, Japan in 1945. So I'm going to set the yield here to about 15 kilotons. That's the yield of the little boy bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. And then we know at what range the effects were felt. Let's match for... 0.3 kilometers away, thereabouts, and it says we have a maximum overpressure for an optimal burst height air burst. An air burst is what happened in Hiroshima, that's why it's not a nuclear wasteland, of 20 psi. If we compare all these values to what we get from a much more modern computer, we see that they all line up. No doubt exactly because simulations like this rely on the book our slide rule is based on. If you want to run calculations like this yourself and don't want to scour eBay for a 70-year-old piece of plastic, a link to print and build the nuclear bomb effects computer is in the description. This object is for the nuclear enthusiast, the historian, someone like me. I really hope we never have to actually use any calculations in a computer like this, digital or otherwise. Why? Well, according to the new book by Annie Jacobson, Nuclear War, A Scenario, and dozens of interviews with people that actually know, even a limited nuclear exchange between two superpowers could reliably lead to the end of the world in less than 45 minutes. I admire this object as a science communicator and an engineer, but make no mistake, I truly think that the best possible future for us is one in which the calculations inside this object stay in the past. Until next time. Now exiting the facility.
Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to join our private Discord, drape on a silky white lab coat, get private members only live streams with me, get access to behind the scenes stuff, get to give me episode suggestions and ping me at any time of day, you can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill to join the facility today. And hey, you get your name on every single video if you support us just enough. And look at how many of you have already grown graciously done that. There's so many people to thank. How could I possibly even pass all this time? I'm becoming something of a nuclear collector now. I'm, I'm looking at different people's trinkets and all their odds and ends and trying to collect things that mean something to me, which is all to say, if you have uh, any leads on nuclear ephemera like the nuclear bomb effects computer, let me know in the comments, or let me know what your favorite little trinket is. I'm not trying, I'm, I'm only trying to connect with things that actually mean something to me or that I have a connection with, but uh, yeah, I'm willing to hear you out. Put it down in the comments. Thanks for watching. <laughs>